So hello everybody and everyone. What a great pleasure to have you here in this Wednesday afternoon a webinar from Admiral Markets. It's Marcus time. Today we are going to talk about trend lines and uh, channels, including what is a trend and how do you know if you are in a trend marketing or market or in a range and how you can identify a trend line or trend channels we can trade with and top strategies for trend trading. So I love this topic because it's one of my pre, uh, preferred topics, trend trading. You know, I'm a trend trader. Make sure you uh, stay uh, until the end of this webinar course when I'll be showing you why trend strategies are the most powerful strategies ever because they are the pure nature of uh, trading. My name is Marcus Gabel. I'm a professional analyst, speaker, trading and life coach and offshore a real trader. And I've been trading the global markets for over 22 years right now. More information about myself you will find on my homepage. In this webinar, Serious Trading Spotlight, I'm partnering with Admiral Markets, which is a Forex and a CFD broker that offers trading and over 8,000 different financial instruments through one of the world's best trading platforms, MetaTrader 5. Finally, if you watch this on YouTube, guys, remember to like this video, share it with other traders and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you watch this video till the end, you will see how we can support you as best as possible. I can see on my right side, on my right screen, the chat is open, guys. If you have any questions about the slides or whatever is moving you, then let me know. Okay, you know, we are talking about trend trading. And before we talk about this special topic, we need to talk about the six tenets of the Dow theory, because these six tenets, uh, tenets are responsible for every kind of trade. So please feel free. If you have any questions, type it in the chat box because we can talk about everything. You know, this is my private opinion. There is the biggest secret in trading is that doesn't exist any secret. So uh, at the end, um, there you are as a human, um, human being, you are responsible for your own trading. So let's talk about the six tenets of the Dow theory. The first one was the averages discount everything. So even you have a look at fundamental data, or even you have a look at the news maybe, or something else, what's, uh, some, uh, something else what is interesting for you at the end, it's your private opinion. And at the end, you can everything, what happens around the world and whatever the price moves, you can see it in the chart. And the higher you are in time frame, the more you can see how the smart money, the big money is engaged in the, the special chart or whatever you are looking for. So this is the first tenet and this is a little, a little bit controversial discussed uh, theory because um, people say it is important to know about the news. It is important to know about fundamental things. I would say it's a little bit, um, how should I say? It's a little bit uh, uh, provocative because uh, I say it's not because any news and every kind of fundamental information, you can have so much information as you want. What do you have to do at the end? If you watch, if you read any news and if you watch any fundamental datas, data, at the end, you have to push the button. You have to open the screen. You have to open your order mask and you have to type in your orders and to send it to Admiral Markets to your account. And uh, even you have a big account and you work with really huge money, at the end, I can see it in the chart 
because you have to put your order in the order book and supply and demand. Then I can see it in the chart. So I didn't do that job. You did it. You watched the news and you spent a lot of time to interpret some fundamental data. Not me. You did it. But at the end, you have to open your order mask. You have to put your order into the book map. And then I can see it in the chart without that I did this job. Therefore, it's my private opinion that I say, okay, it's nice. I know the news and I know COT data and something else. It's interesting to know, but at the end, you have to make a trade. And this trade is based on supply and demand. And therefore, everything was, everything what the price moves, you can see in the chart. This is the first tenet. And if you think it really through, you will, you have to agree with me. This is because it's a fact. So maybe we watch five people watch the same chart and we have five opinions, but everybody has to open the order mask and has to put the chart, has to put the orders in it. And at the end, you can see it in the chart. And if you want to see where the chart or where the price in general is going to, it's the best you have a look at the big chart. So in maybe daily chart or weekly chart, because the smart money is not engaged in the five minute chart or hourly chart. Most of the times really smart money uh, drives the big trends. So, but this is the first tenet that everything what happens around the world and everything what happens around the price, you can see it in the chart, everything. Tenet number two, the market and every kind of market, every kind of underlying, every kind of share, future, whatever you're looking for has three trends. We have the major trend, that's a long term. Then we have the medium trend, that's a medium term, and we have a small trend, this is short term trading. An uptrend, of course, is defined by higher highs and higher lows, and a downtrend is defined by lower lows and lower highs. So this is basic knowledge. This is the foundation of every kind of trend. But even you have long, long history, you can see a huge trend, the major trend even in the tick chart. Or maybe you have enough history about your trade, about your broker, then you can open the one minute chart, for example. You can scroll in or scroll out that you have as, mu as much as possible history. And then you can see the big moves. This is like the major trend. And the more you scroll in the chart, the, uh, the more clear is the chart. And then you can see the medium trend and at least, or at last, sorry, at last, the short trend. But in every time frame, in every underlying, in every market, you can see three trend sizes. Tenet number three, major trends have three phases on not only major trends, every of these three trends, a major, a medium, and the small trends, they have three trend phases. So the first one is the accumulation phase. You can see it here in, on the left side in this slide here. This is when the move, when the correction comes to an end, the moves, uh, the, the price rebounds or bounced at the special point and the next move is going to stop. This is the so-called accumulation phase. Why is that, why is that name? Because accumulation is... Uh, based on that term or about that knowledge that the smart money, money is count from that guys, they are in panic and they want to sell everything. So they count together and together. And so this is the term they accumulate. All the, the, the things, all the pieces, the panic traders want to sell out and want to give up, give out. So this is the so-called accumulation phase. The next one is the phase of progression. This means 
when the chart or the price is going to move faster and faster and faster up to the last high here in this slide you can see p2 that's point number two every high in dow theory or that's in dow theory every new high or maybe in a downtrend it's the low it's called the point two and the accumulation phase the deepest point the correction point has number three so the only thing as a uh, as a dow theory trader you have to count to three. One, when the trade starts, last high, point two, last correction point uh, is three. Therefore, I love Dow theory because it's enough if you can count to three, one, two, three, it's, it's, that's, the, that's all. So that's a little bit choked by sign. Besides, so this is the progression phase, the space between the accumulation phase and the last point two. This is most important. And the third phase then is the so-called distribution phase, phase number three. This is all that space which coming up the last point two in an uptrend or down in a, in a, in a short trend below the last point two. This is the so-called distribution phase or other people would say the acceleration phase when the price is really moves on. So like today, can you see it? maybe in Dow, in the Dow Jones, in hourly chart. So we had the correction and then the big move comes on every price about, about the last point two is jumping up and up and up. This is the distribution phase. So if you have a look at this slide here on the right on the left side here, then you can think about, so where is the best situation to get into the market? In which phase? It's not the topic today, but maybe if you think it through, you can understand where is seemingly the best point to get into the market. Distrib distribution? Mm, of course not, because the price is old. We are in the move. So maybe you can see it. The best situation or the best stage, the best phase is always accumulation progression phase. This space up to the last point two. This is the best phase to come into the market because then you will catch up the last move and you can uh, participate from the list, a huge move. This is the best point. That's easy. It's not a rocket science. Okay, let's go on. Um, tenet number four, at the best, the trends must confirm each other. What does it mean? It means if you want to trade an hourly chart, the daily chart must confirm the hourly chart. So the leading trend is the higher time frame. This leading trend must support you. So must is a little bit strong word, I know. But if you have the smart money on your side or in your back and they will push you, then you have the bigger uh, probabilities that your trade will be a winner. So maybe I wouldn't say not exactly about the time frames, but if you have enough history, maybe you open the hourly chart and then you scroll out, then you have a lot of history you can watch or you can look for, then make sure that the big, that the major trend is in the same direction you want to trade with your medium or your small trend. So the best is always when the major trend is in a, in a stable valid, in a, in a valid trend phase, and it, it, uh, it itself is in a correction. And on this way, up to the last point through from the major trend, this way you can trade with your small trend phase, with your, uh, with your small trend. Then you have two trends in the same direction and there will come a lot of guys they want to buy after you and this is the big question where are the buses where the people are sitting in they want to buy after you it's nice if you see something in the chart and you see oh i'm the only one who can see it okay that's nice then you may be a hero but you die really lonely if no one wants to buy after you and push and want to push your order into the profit. So make sure that the bigger trend size is always with you and not 
against you. This is the easiest way to make profit in the market. Okay, I know it requires a lot of patience. And this, uh, hmm, this, um, this is that the meaning of that is that you cannot trade only one chart. A lot of guys lose their money because they only have a look at the DAX, maybe Dow Jones or Euro. So they only watch this one chart. And if you want to trade like the Dow T or trend trading with trend lines and channels we are talking today, then it's not really often the case that you have such a chance. Therefore, I suggest that you have a real a huge list of different, uh, different underlyings, maybe Forex. We have a lot of Forex a currency pairs you can trade with. So it's always the best. My mentor taught me once he taught me never have, never ever, you should have a preferred chart. Never. You can have a preferred setup. Yes. But it's like a template. Use this setup like this one, Dow Theory, and have a look if it fits to one of your uh, one of your underlines in your in your list. So then you are not depending from one chart because this is really dangerous. If you only look at one chart, maybe DAX or Dow, something else, and your preferred setup isn't coming over, you are in danger to trade something else. In the meantime, you trade something else, but not about your setup. This is really dangerous, and this is a really big trap. And I promise you, you will lose more money than you can ever win with that. So it's always the best. This is a great setup with trend trading, with the higher time frame or the higher uh, trend size in the same direction like you, and then be patient and wait for your signal. Number five, volume must confirm the trend. The volume must increase in direction of the leading trend. This is especially the case if you trade with futures or with shares. So if you have uh, less volume, uh, then the trend isn't going to run. So make sure that if you trade with futures or maybe shares, that the volume in every, uh, in every meta trader, you have a volume display on the lower side. You can see if the volume increase, then the trend is going, to, is going to move and then you can jump in in this space between here the accumulation phase and the progression phase. This is the best thing you can work with. So a trend, that's the tenet number six, a trend is assumed to be ineffective until it gives def, definite, definite uh, signals that it has reversed. So Charles Dow thus describes here the inertia of the trends on the basis of physics. As a rule, the probability is that the leading or the existing trend will continue. The probabilities are at around 67% if you catch a really young trend. If you have an old trend, maybe you see the fifth or sixth or seventh trend arm, which uh, one trend arm is one move and one correction. This is one trend arm. So the best is always you catch a young trend, the first, the second, the third, and the fourth trend arm or the third, fourth correction at least, or latest uh, fourth correction. Then you have the probability of almost 67% that the trend will continue. And if you get into the trade in this accumulation phase or this progression phase, then you know you have 67% hit quote that your target will reach, or at least that the trend will continue and you are in the profit and the market will decide how far the next movement will go. So trade the trend. And if you catch up a really young trend, then trail your stop over the last point three and three and three and give the market the chance to give you a lot of money if you catch a young trend and if you can trail your stop. So, and if you can see the trend is moving or is uh, makes a rebound, 
then you can stop and then you can take the money from the table. Okay, that's a little bit of introduction about the DAO theory. And now with this knowledge, how does uh, that uh, DAO theory has an impact to the price and the trend? We can think about what is a trend. What is a really good trend? For most part, there are trends with different orientations. So we have different trading orientations. We have the fundamental, we have arbitrage, they are looking for different places, London, Frankfurt, and they use the different prices from one and only uh, underlying. Then we have the hatching guys. They are, maybe we have um, some uh, huge companies like Bayer in Germany or maybe Adidas or something else. Uh, most of them, they're using uh, commodities or metals and something else they make to hatch about high prices. You can see it like the COT, COT data, for example. And then the guys like us, we have the technical analysis. Okay, four kind of traders, four different orientations. What do you think, which kind of these guys are the most important? What do you think? I can give you the answer. No one. No one is more important than the others. Because we need all of them. Because all of that guys bring, will bring volatility into the market and liquidity. But now we have three directions we can trade. Long, short, or nothing else. Flat. What do you think? Which one is the most important, long, short, or flat? If you think about your trade, that's not so easy to, uh, to think through. But uh, if I think about my only trading career in the past, I always think, okay, I have to look for the long traders because I want to go long as well. Mm. But that's wrong. The most important group of traders are, are those they are standing on the sideline because the flat guys are the most important guys you have to look for. Why? They are not in the market right now. And as I told you, if you want to make a profitable trade, you have to think about the guys they want to buy after you. Because the guys they are long already or short already, they don't have an, they don't have any more an impact to the market, because they are already in. They did their trades already. They are in. They don't have any impact to the market anymore, uh, except they're going out. But if you want to go long, you have to think about the guys they want to buy after you or to sell after you, which means you have, to, you have to have a look at the flat traders. You have to think about the buses, they're standing on the bidding point at the bus station, they bring the people they want to buy after you. This is the only chance that your trading or that your trade become a winner or that your trade is going to a profit station, a profit situation. So always think about the flat traders, not long or short. This is the most important thing. Okay, now here we go, trends and psychology. So when we have more buyers than sellers, the price increases, which, which means the price is long, the price increases. But inexperienced traders are really afraid and they unsure of what to do, so they are waiting. They need safety. They need to feel good. They, feel, they, they want to feel secure. And they wait until the movement is stable as sure as possible. Stable and sure as possible. And then they jump onto this running move. But guys, really remember this one. Where is the best situation? Accumulation phase. But that's the human factor. People are looking always for safeties, securities, protection. People hate risk. 
otherwise you would do something else in your life but not what you do every day why do you do that every day what do you do your job your family whatever you do you feel safe everything is fine as long as you do the same thing every day but in trading you are on the right side of the chart you always in risk but people hate risks and people hate more changes from their self. So they are looking always for safeties, protection and securities. That's why they are waiting for the move, which means they are too late. They are in the, uh, in the uh, distribution phase. Because maybe you know it by yourself, by your own trading career or trading uh, experience, how often did we say, ah, let's wait if the price come up over the 200 moving average line. Or if I get a signal from my moving average divergence convergence uh, indicator. Or if we uh, jump over this trend line or whatever. Oh, the sun is going up or down. Sunrise or sunset, whatever. We're always looking for safety <laughs> securities. But guys, that's, that's wrong. Absolutely wrong. Don't, don't forget, trading, it's a market. If you want to buy, you need someone who wants to sell, even in the forex market, always. Every kind of trading is market. You want to buy? Okay, nice. But you need someone who wants to sell. And who sells if you want to buy over up in the move? Who wants to sell there? Traders who already, who already have uh, made a profit. And all those that were responsible for that current trend because experienced traders are already in the accumulation phase. I hope you understand that point. There's a consequence the trend stops and the correction starts and you are too late. Why? You were looking for safeties, so securities. You want to wait if the price goes up and goes, goes up and you can see, oh, now it's fine. But most of the guys, the inexperienced traders have forgotten that if you want to buy over, over there, you need to someone who wants to sell. Who wants to sell? The same guy who buy, who bought very early because this guy is already in a profit. And now this guy said, okay, I found a stupid guy. This stupid guy want to buy this expensive price. Get it. I'm fine, but I made my profit. And then you have this change from supply and demand and the correction starts. That's the point. Trader who only jumps into the running move, they are in the loss right now. Because inexperienced traders realize that they got into the market too late. Then they lose money and now they get into panic and try to sell the position because they realize, oh my God, I'm wrong. I lose money more than I wanted to lose. Remember how the market functions. If you want to sell, you need someone who wants to buy. If you are in panic now, and if you want to sell something, you need another one of the other side who wants to buy. So who wants to buy right now? Those experienced traders who will wait for the correction to buy at the cheaper price again. And maybe it's just a game, it's the same guy who sold you on the expensive price. The same guy Take your pieces again if you are in panic and if you say, oh my God, I am wrong, I'm wrong. How can I put it off, put it off from my account? Okay, and the other guy said, okay, here I am again. Give it to me, price is cheap right now. You are wrong, I'm on the sideline, give it to me. I will take it again. I love to take the cheap price because you are in the loss. And you see, this is the kind how the trend develop, basically. These actions always repeat themselves, always. That repetition leads to consistent movements and corrections until you will see the trend. Who are responsible for that trend? You and me.
experienced traders and unexperienced traders. And believe me, I made this experience really, really often, more than I ever can count. I always bought too late and I always sold at the wrong point. And after that, afterwards, I realized I wanted to trade long, but I made losses. And at the end of the day, one a week, I have a look at the chart again and I could see, oh damn, it was a long trade. Basically, I was right. Why did I make so much losses? Hmm, of course, I am looking for protection. I am always looking for safeties. And believe me, I lost so much money about this stupid behavior. But at that moment, if you can see and realize how does a trend develop, then you can buy at the right point and sell at the right point. So early question, where's the best place to jump into a trade? Repeat, accumulation phase, but I want to give it the answer a little bit later. But now let's see an example in the live market. So here, as you can see, this is um, Dow Jones, four hourly chart. So what you can see, look at this one. I will draw it. Now oh, give me this chance here. A little bit easier. Point to my drawing program. Here we, here we go. So, okay. So I will draw it for you. You can see it here right now. So you have the move. You have the correction. Then you have the move and the next correction. So you see, it's always the same behavior. Always the same movement, correction, movement, correction. You see, nothing else. It's always the same movement, correction, and movement. And sometimes, yes, okay, you have a trend break. Okay, fine. But afterwards, you can see again, oh my God, movement, correction, movement, correction, movement, correction. You see, it's always the same. You can use whatever kind, you can, every, every kind of chart you can use, it's always the same. So now, how we can figure out where's the best place to go into the market? Always in the correction. Because you see, always in the correction, always from the correction. Wait for a rebound here, wait. You can see, wait, why is it the best to get into the market in the correction phase? Hmm, I can show you. If you go up, if you're going to trade here about the last point two, you cannot know how far the market will go. You cannot know. You see, sometimes it's go a little bit more far and sometimes not and the price will come back. So people, they get into here because they are watching, they are looking for securities. They want to see, oh, I want to see if the price goes uh, up the last point two, then I'm safe. Yes, okay, they are in. And then the price goes down and down and down and they are in the, in the loss. And they say, oh my God, I'm so wrong. I have to sell my position. But they've forgotten. If you want to sell something, you need someone who wants to buy. Who wants to buy? The same guy, they, the same guy they bought here on the lower side. They sold here and they will buy here again, the same position from you. And so this is always the same situation. So this is an example. This wasn't really example. So let's go on here. Okay, trend trading or range bounds. Cause maybe you know, and you made your own experience, not always, we, ha we don't have a trend always. If we would have, we would have a 100% setup, but we don't. And that doesn't exist a 100% setup. Or otherwise, we, wouldn't, uh, we cannot make trading anymore. So that's the unfortunate thing. The unfortunately, there is no guaranteed way to predict the trend or range in advance. If we would, then we, had a, we would have a 100% uh, setup, but we don't. But here comes the big but there is a very helpful tool for, for, predict, for predicting an upcoming trend or a range. One word, the so-called the price. Guys, never forget in your own trading, never, never forget, please. You don't trade the DAX. 
You don't trade Dow Jones. You don't trade Euro US dollar. You always trade a price. You trade the price of one contract DAX. You trade the price of one contract of Dow. Or you, tra you trade one lot of oil of Euro USD. You trade the price and not this underlying, that every underlying has a price. What do you ask for if you want to charge? Maybe gold. You always ask how much? How much is gold right now? 1,500, I don't know, dollars. Or you ask, where is Dow Jones right now? How much is it? 30,000 points, but you have to know how much is one contract. So please realize that you trade the price. So, and this is the big information. So if you have such an asset with an unjustified price, there is a bigger chance. In this picture, you can see that the green zone, we have red zone and the green zone, and the green zone is the unfair value price zone, the unjustified price. There is a bigger chance that this will lead to a correction because every price will be balanced after a while. And the deeper you are in the green zone, the more, the, you know, the more far away you are from the fair price, the bigger the chance is that the price will go back to this point, uh, to this special balance price. And the, the, far, the more far you are away from that, the more you have the chance that this distance, the price will go up by a trend, so you can wait. So most of the times in the unjustified price zone, you can see there will occur a, a trend and not a range. So if you have an asset with a fair or justified price, there is a really big possibility to get a range because the price is fair valued there. And it's circling around the so-called point of control or it is inside this fair value zone. And then the, more, the closer the price will come to this so-called point of control, the more you have the possibility that you will see a range. So let's see it here in the slide. I will count it for you. So you see the green rectangle here on, that's on this side. Here, this green rectangle, you can see, this is a range. Why is it? We are circling around the point of control. But on the lower side, here on the lower side, you can see we are far away from the point of control. And here you can see there occur the trend. Here occur the trend movement corrections. And then this chance you, call, you can see, at the point of control, you can make range trading, so-called range trading. But if you want to make trend trading, then you, have to, then you have to have a look at the price, which is in an unjustified price zone. This is the best situation. So how to identify trend lines and channels right now? To identify a trend line, you need more than one higher high here on the left side. You can see it or a lower low if you have a short trend. So if you have at least two higher highs, which means one move and one correction, you can connect with the trend line. You can see it here in a slide. These two high points, of course, the same goes for the lower lows, of course, in the other direction. The more high points you can connect, the stronger the trend and the older the trend, of course. So now you can see, if you think a little bit through, it's not so difficult to make trades based on a clear strategy. So let's see. To identify the trend channel, you need at least two supporting points on the lower and the upper side. Then you can have this trend channel. And if you have such points, you can connect those with channel on the upper and the lower side. So. With this insight, ladies and gentlemen, into 
trends developing, you will know that such points are either the end of the correction or the end of the movement. Have a look at this picture here on the left side. So let's see. You see, it's just a downtrend. Of course, the blue lines signal uh, are the signal for a downtrend. So you see, okay, here, this is the end of the move. And here, this is the end of the correction. This is a trend channel. And again, you see, that's the end of the correction, end of the move, end of the correction. You see, it's really easy. The rest is risk management and trust the trend. You know the three T's, trust the trend. That's the best thing you can do in trading. Okay, let's talk about top strategies for trend trading. Once you've identified a trend line with at least two supporting points, you can use this situation. If a trend, if a price, always think about in prices, not underlyings. If the price meets such a trend line, Next time, you can use the bounce to trade in direction of the trend, for example. You can see it on the left side with the green rectangles here. If the trend line is broken, you can use the retest to trade to the opposite direction of the trend. But how can I show you that? Just only with examples. So let's see examples. So you see the following thing. Here we go we can make a trend line. So one, two, three. So maybe you can see, no, come on, this one. So first of all, I'll raise my, this one, one, two. So this is the third time, maybe you can go along there or you can catch up the last correction to make a next trade here. This means if you, hit such a trend line and you can see with the candle, okay, there is a rebound, use this situation because you know a trend continuation is always more likely than a trend break. So what can you do? This is one, a really, really strong and really easy strategy. So what's about, uh, we see that the trend uh, maybe is broken, okay? Let's see what we can do there. Um, so maybe this one, short trade. So you can connect this trend line, you see the trend here first. So you see, uh, let's do it with this one. It's a little bit easier for me. So you see, you can go short one there and one there, but then you can see this is a trend break. And sometimes, so unfortunately, unfortunately not always, the price will come back and make a retest here and then you can go up again. So maybe I will find a, another situation I can show you better. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, where is it? Not the best situation here right now. Um, this is, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's not so easy. So maybe I can find it there better. I want to show you the retest. So yes, here we go. I guess this is one. So this is a trend line. So maybe you can see here. Yes, here we go. So that's a little bit in that way. So and now you see this one, the price, this is uh, the chances you can go short, here short, here short, cause it's the hits, uh, the price hits again, the trend line and you see, okay, it's a little bit of downtrend. Just only an example that you can imagine what you can do here. So, and now you can see, oh, this is the break with this candle and then you can see this is a retest the retest of this broken trend line. And if you can see, okay, the retest holds here and it works, then you can go up. This is like a retest. Work with it, draw it in any way. So maybe another one. So you see it's always the same or in uh, this one, it's always the same. 
So you see maybe trend lines, um, broken trend lines, dumping us in, in that way. Let's see if I can find a little better one. Oh, uh, not, not, yeah, maybe this one. Um, so you see the trend line here. That's the trend line. So, and then you could see here is the trend break and the price normally will come back and you see this is a retest and the price will go up a little bit. Not so far, but this is just only that you can imagine. That way, okay, the price broke down to the lower side, but there you can see very often the price make some, uh, the price makes some retest of the such so-called trend lines. So that's really, really easy uh, trend strategies. Even you meet the trend line again, then you can use this, this bounce again, or you have a broken trend line, then you can use the retest of, the, of it. So let's make a little bit conclusion. Understanding how trends develop is the foundation of every kind of trading. The clear knowledge about the price will help you to predict the trend and the possible range about the price. To identify trend lines or trend channels, you need movement and corrections. Without any move, without any correction, you don't have a trend. And trend strategies are the most powerful strategies ever because they are the pure nature of trading because we work with prices. I hope you understand everything. If you don't understand anything, or if you have any questions, please join our trading exclu our exclusive trading spotlight community. Here is the link on tradersyard.com. There we have there we created a wonderful community, trading spotlight community with Paul Jens and myself. We give you answer to any question you have. Next time on Friday, guys, Jens, my congenious partner, will uh, we'll show you something about optimize your trading with the trading channel, including how to synchronize your trading account with FX Blue, for example, which data should be reviewed and how we can use the data to optimize your trading when and how, when and where on Friday, 7th February, same time, same place. Watching on YouTube, guys, give us a like, share it with other traders. I want to say thank you for your lifetime. I hope you learned a little bit about trend trading. Okay, it's a little bit like scratching on the over on the, on the surface, but you know, we have all webinars here on YouTube and with wonderful trading spotlight webinar series, you learn a lot of things about trading and with this knowledge, I'm really sure you can be, become a successful trader. Here you have your answers, contact us wherever you want and you know the risk is on yours. And I hope you were satisfied with this session and I wish you now a great day, great rest of the day, have a lot of success. And if you have any questions, come into Trading Spotlight. There we are. We never, let, we never leave a, behind, a client behind. We are here for you. Thanks and bye-bye.